Well, welcome to uh, another rant from the den. Uh, it's Sunday, it's raining, it's miserable, and I'm just checking here, do we need to wear masks? You don't have to wear them in the gym, you don't have to wear them in the pub, but you have to wear them in the shops. And seeing as I've been down the shops this morning uh, to buy this paper, I, uh, I couldn't have a mask, so I've had to ad lib a bit. These are, ho, oh, these are, uh, uh, yes, enough of that, they were black tights, so I'll start to wait for the, uh, the insults to come in. It's a, get a life. Right, okay then, here we go. Um, do we have to wear masks to go to the gym? I can't wait to get back to the gym because I've got a machine there that does everything for me. Twix, Maltesers, Mars bars, got a lot, everything. Okay, did you see Andrew Marr this morning? He gets better, didn't he? Eh? Now he's slagging off the rest of the world as well as just the tourists. Now it's got here, he's had the Chinese and the Russian ambassador on. He's got our Home Secretary, Dominic uh, Rabb, and some bird from the Labour Party who looks like a Nolan fan. I bet the Russians are quaking in their boots at the fact that the, the Shadow Home Secretary, if she ever gets in, what will they do with this girl? Well, just dance, she'd help, she'd dance him round the fucking handbag the night before. The Chinese ambassador looked really scary, didn't he? I, I got one word in four, but it talking like that. And, uh, and, and Andrew, you did give him a bit of a bad time. Now, what we've got to say is with this Huawei thing, this 5G, okay, um... If, if the Russians uh, let them build it, fine, we'll do all that, and that, we'll have an off button. No fuck around, I can have that. So when the Chinese ambassador speaking for his spies, I listen here, you, what? Oh, they turn a flucky button off, the bastards. Anyway, so you watch it, Andrew, because if you upset that Chinese ambassador, you're saying that they're a state that controls the world and everything. Well, as I said last week, every little village in the world has a Chinese restaurant in it. They're going to get a memo from him. Watch out for Andrew Ma. Here he comes, little fucker with sticking out ear holes. Go on, piss in his one ton soup. Funny, isn't it? Do you ever think that? Because, you know, if you upset the waiter, does it, do they spit in you? You know, whenever we go in an Indian restaurant, okay, you go in there every night, they stay open after the pubs. Where else? Right In this country, there's a restaurant, apart from a kebab thing or a takeaway, where does it stay open where you can sit down and have a meal after the pub shuts? An Indian restaurant. They're normally run by Bangladeshi boys. But you go in and you're so pissed. They let you in, don't they? And then we all say, oh, don't let them in. Fucking all the pubs are shut. We're shut. Sorry, lads, we're shut. Go off, take your fucking grief somewhere else. No, come in. Table for 24. Come in. Drink on house. First drink. Yeah. Hey, you, hey, come here, Gunga, did you? Get us a fucking pint of bitter and put head on it or I'll put a fucking head on you. Oh, Gunga, did They take it on the chin. They don't care. They don't fucking care. They they get their own back in the kitchen. This vanker from up north of England, because he's Chinese now as well, he called me Gunga, did Give me his nun bread. He wiped my bollocks on his nun bread. He wanted cucumber rater. I give him cucumber rater. Irish coffee. Well, leave it. What would you do, eh? <laughs> Be careful where you eat. So, let's get back to the Russian ambassador. Now, Russians are accused of all types of things because they look a bit scary, don't they? And they, uh, I've been, I haven't been to Russia. I went to Ukraine with Greg Lake and another guy. We were studying. I was going to produce a, a ballet come opera. <laughs> Um, by a, a Russian composer called uh, Mussorgsky called Pictures at an Exhibition. You Emerson, Lake and Palmer fans would know this. And uh, this is where I give Keith a load of money to do the rest of the songs and he gave me all the money back and said, I can't do it, it won't, won't come. Anyway, me and Greg went out there. It's a fantastic fucking place, I swear to God. Chernobyl, I mean, they don't even have to cook the fish in that, in that town. It just fucking comes up already battered. But the old Russian... Russian am best. <coughs> Hang on. I've got a note here. Oh, yeah. Right. It says, tell when you met the Russian ambassador. Well, ages ago, I was in the Ivy restaurant. Now, the Ivy restaurant, the one that was in London before it got franchised, was where you'd walk around and you'd be rubbernecking all the time, wouldn't you, to see who was there. And one night, I sat there with Keith Emerson and uh, eating, and I looked across there, and there was Elton John and his um, partner at the time, my husband, whatever it is, and uh, sitting with Mr. Uh, Posh. Uh, Beckham, Mr. Beckham, uh, David Beckham and Posh Beckham. And they were sat there, she was eating a pea, he was eating 
proper food. And I looked over and went, oh, I must go and say hello. Keith thought I was going to go and say hello to Elton John. Well, I wouldn't say hello to Elton John because he can be a bit aloof and probably hates my guts anyway for doing jokes about gay people without even seeing it. It's a long part. So across the road was the Russian ambassador who I had met at a presentation award somewhere or other. I can't remember how I got involved. I think it was from the Ukrainian ambassador because me and Greg wanted to go to Ukraine. Anyway, um, I, I went over and said, hello, uh, Ambassador, how are you? And he was with this big guy, a portly man, who I'd met ages ago when I lived in London. I had a flat in London and used to go to the gym. And in the gym was this big portly Russian guy. Everyone said, he's a spy. So I got talking to him being nosy and he was the head of Aeroflot. Why the fuck you'd ever want to get on that plane anyway? But anyway, he was head of Aeroflot and I said, you're a spy. And he just giggled and laughed. I mean, I was no threat at all. Anyway. In the night in the Ivy, Ivy, or even the Ivy, he was sat with the Russian ambassador and this big fat spy. And I went over and said, hello, ah, the spy is here. So he, he spat his wine out. And they had two very attractive women that I assumed were their wives. And this Russian woman said to me, I hear you're learning to speak Russian. Oh, Christ, obviously she'd never met me in a whorehouse in Dubai. Word must have got out. So anyway, she said, Look. so I gave her my little spill. Hello, how are you? Look very lovely today. How's things going? You know, what, what's your name? All that schoolboy Russian. And uh, we started talking about Russian and Putin and, and, and everything. And so she said to me, perhaps you can be our James Bond and work for us. Oh, I said, how much does it pay? I fell about laughing. So I went back and sat down with Keith. And he said, what was that about? So I told him. And as they got up to leave, they waved like this. And a waiter came over and gave me a bottle of Dom Perignon champagne and a little card. And written on it was, I swear to God, from Russia with love. Now, how classy was that? If I'd have turned it over and said, please give us all the nuclear secrets, I'd have fucking paddled up to Fast Lane and give it to him. It was great. So anyway, big headlines this week. And it made me turn the page really, really quickly. And it said, and I quote... Um, Miss Swimsuit Stripped. So I flicked over, and it's this young lady in a swimsuit, very nice, all everything, and uh, and um, she's been stripped of her title because she put on Twitter, all lives matter. What is going on? Why, why has she been stripped because all lives matter? Because some fucking arsehole that's got something to do with Miss Swimwear is frightened to death. Frightened to death of being well, I'm not frightened to death. All lives fucking matter. Print that, everyone. White, striped, brown, whatever. Especially brown lives matter at the moment, if you can call someone from a BAME community, but Asian, South Asians again. Rochdale is spiking. There's another fucking shock. Rox, Rochdale might have to go into lockdown now. What's Rochdale and Blackburn got in common with Bradford? Let's. Is there no one seeing a pattern? Are we all frightened to fucking death to say anything? Let's ban Miss Swimsuit every time that she... Anyone dares mention anything. Let's get Miss Swimsuit fucking banned. Stand by for Slough next. We're a Slough 6 to 4, Croydon 4 to 1. It is where large communities are used to living together. Uh, they've got to be persuaded to stop this. And most of the mayors and all that are all of the same origin. So fucking sort it out. And while you're at it, who is the pussy at the fucking RAF that changed the name of Guy Gibson's dog? Hmm? What is going on? You can actually train history of the dog of a young man who died giving his life for this country who got the Victoria Cross. Come on. What is going on? So can you, if you have a dog now, can you call him N-word? N! Come on, N! Oh, that would be all right, wouldn't it, eh? And, and talking of this, why were you pleased? Why aren't you pleased taking any notice of me? Some idiot policeman has knelt on a black guy's neck again. Of course, it's all over the papers and the BBC are making headlines over it. You know, Christ, it's unbelievable. This bloke was handcuffed and a copper was kneeling on his fucking neck, only briefly. So we don't see all the film, of course, but of course, everyone who's black, an ex-black commissioner, everyone will now saying it's out of order and it's racism and let's pull some more fucking statues down. But uh, why don't you train these policemen properly? Why are these young coppers not trained properly? Clarissa Dick, get the fucking policemen trained into proper jap slapping and how to restrain people properly rather than kneeling on her neck, the fucking idiot. No, this is going to happen, so you just suspend him. I mean, he's an ethnic minority himself, and he didn't notice he was ginger. But <clears throat> now they've taken this guy who was on the floor, they've charged him with possession of a knife. Apparently there was a fight. 
Apparently he has pleaded not guilty at the magistrate's court, but then apparently, allegedly has said, yes, he did have a knife, but it was to repair his bicycle. Okay, so look, why bother arresting anyone that's black, Asian, gay, anything? Just don't fucking arrest them. Just let them, let, let them get on with it. We just, we won't do it anymore. We'll just keep away from everyone. What did Pink Floyd say? We'll build a wall. Well, I've built one. Thank you for watching on YouTube. Please press your subscribe button and sign up for JDTV. I don't care, do I?